So welcome again to the final weekly charting analysis webinar of 2015. Um, been an interesting start to the week. Uh, we've had the, uh, the Spanish elections, which have caused a bit of a fallout initially in European markets, uh, but we've recovered back into positive territory. There was a big, massive route in uh, US stocks at the um, at the end of last week, so we're um, we're awaiting the the open of U.S. markets to see how they fare. All the while, I'm flipping through the the risk warnings on the screen here, and just a reminder that any uh, any questions at all, just feel free to send it through to the uh, the chat or the Q and A box in the uh, in the webinar software. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, well, just as, just as a little interesting by the by, working on some summary pieces for, uh, for 2015, a little review, looking forward kind of thing. This is something that you have to look forward to if you so desire to look at it. Um, was uh, something I'm working on for the IPOs of last year. This was some of the biggest IPOs. Um, World Pay was the biggest one. Auto Trader as well. You can, as you can see pretty much dominated by those top two. Uh, we just had Wizz Air, which had a bit of a rough start, but popped higher, but not, uh, not too impressively so far. It's only just listed, so we can't um, hold it too much against them. But really, almost all the IPOs of this year in the red. Um, none, of them, none of them earning money from their, from their listing price, except uh, World Pay and Auto Trader, the two biggest. So interesting theme there. It's been a good year in terms of uh, the market cap added by IPOs, um, but with this kind of performance, it might be a struggle to raise more money next year. So um, maybe a bit of a downturn in IPOs for those of you who either trade those through through our system. We normally list them on the first day of official trading, or if you have them somehow, you know, you're able to participate on the actual um, IPO itself. Um, then, um, yeah, interesting. Interesting year. Back to markets as the hour. As I mentioned, the Spanish election been a bit of an issue. Um, it initially caused a lower open across Europe, but now only Spain is down. Um, every other market in the, in the green, including the, the FTSE 100. Um, obviously, the big event of last week was the the Fed rate hike meeting. We've basically been waiting for that the whole year. And um, the event itself, a little bit of a damp squid, um, just a sort of general relief rally, I think. Probably see it best in the uh, the Dow Jones US 30 chart, where this was the week, this was last week, leading up to it, on the day of the um, of the decision, finished higher. But then, uh, timber, the last two days of last week, you know, we came right back down to those um, those lows of November. And we're at a precipice right now. Um, getting a rebound of these lows, as you might expect, but we did close right at them, which is a pretty negative sign. Um, and this is basically a double top pattern. I'd alluded to it when we were first down here. We've got to bounce back, okay, back into range trading conditions. Didn't make it to the top of the range, first bearish sign bearish engulfing candlestick on the day, big follow through down to the bottom of the range. So, you know, it's choppy Christmas holiday season type trading right now. So um, we may get a break, but I would say more likely a fake out, you know, because there just isn't the sort of liquidity in the market to follow through on these kinds of moves. A lot of choppiness this time of year, more sort of mean reversion type time for trading. You know, if you're a trend follower, it's a little tricky. Um, and so I suspect probably there's not going to be a breakdown into the new year, but you know, I could be wrong. Um, that's that was pretty strong sentiment that carried the market down here. And as I said, double top um, would pretty much, if you know, I may as well use the drawing tool here. Um, you know, if we're assuming that's the whoop, hold on, what am I doing there? Starting along. If we call this the height of the pattern, oh, I'm doing that wrong as well. I'm going to adjust that in a second, I think. Okay, we're looking pretty much conservatively, I would say, in this sort of um, 16 to 70. You know, you could call it 16300 to be conservative as a possible target on a breakdown here. 
and obviously that's not too far away from the uh, the lows in August and September, the um, the uh, the 16,000 round number. So that you know that could be. Um, Quite the sell-off should be uh, should be closed below there. Probably need a you know obviously a daily close, uh, but more the safest result would be a, a weekly close before believing in that in that result of a push lower. Um, so yes, pre-Fed, post-Fed. Um, you know, again a little bit symptomatic of, uh, of just choppy markets at the end of the year, but also just uh, not quite knowing what to make of this rate hike. Um, just because you know normally it's it's considered quite a good thing. The first rate hike because it shows that the economy is going great guns. The, the central bank's trying to slow down the economy because it's doing so well. Not really the case this time. Quite a few problems with the U.S. economy, and um, you know that's um, you know of course con con cause the concern that maybe the Fed is um, making an error here by actually um, by actually choosing to raise rates at this point in time. So that you know that was the big event last week. It, it spread into the other markets, and we'll look at those charts as well. Um, if we are on the uh, the equities front, let's pull up the UK 100. That's where I am, of course. Um, this is the daily chart for the UK 100. I'd actually posted this through our uh, new .com website. If you've been on that one, we've got a new uh, reflect format of a um, news analysis page on there. And um, yeah, posted this 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 rising trend line as a possible inflection point. Did get a sell off there, but actually, you know, undoing a good amount of that today. As you can see, the kind of general environment is that we're in a range trade here, um, and so we bounced off the bottom of the range, came into that trend line resistance, sold off. Now we're trying to, win, you know, we're challenging it again just to see if actually we can push to the top of the range again, and we're just fully sideways. Um, I suspect we probably can break these highs, but I'm feeling like maybe there's going to be another sell-off in the range, perhaps at the 6200, or perhaps up it here at the uh, more like the 6300 type areas would be places I'd be looking for. Uh, maybe not outright sell orders, but uh, maybe looking for some signs of weakness um, through a reversal candlestick pattern or indicator sell-off. But that's the general state of affairs in the um, UK 100. You know, obviously we've made a lower low here. So the kind of general status is a little, you know, and this is the thing I'm going to show you in most of these indices, is that um, you know we're in a kind of um, chop environment where it's been basically here a higher. Um, you know, we haven't finished. I haven't considered this a low just yet, um, but you know, more than likely it's going to be. Um, you know, we kind of formed a lower low there. After having formed a higher low, and then connecting those two peaks um, is uh, it's kind of bearish. You know, just just going on the very simplistic concept that um, you know we're looking at trying to judge the trend here, and it's um, lower lows, lower low, lower highs for a downtrend, which we're basically in according to this weekly chart. Um, but those, those two lower lows and highs preceded higher highs and higher lows. So, we, you know, if we are in a, in a downtrend, we're just beginning. And, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised just to see us put in another higher high here um, just because the market is, is quite choppy. I, you know, if you've been to these webinars before, you've seen that we've broken this longer-term rising trend line. Um, and so that's, you know, that's the severity of what we're dealing with here. If we push below here, you know that's basically confirmed that that's the retest, and we're and we're heading lower. And I I would suspect we head back down to these four, four eight hundred type levels. Yeah, but again, that's a longer term thing. Don't um, base your short term trades on that. Now, <clears throat> moving swiftly over to Europe, you know, the main, uh, one of the most popular indices here, uh, Germany. Similar thing here where we had that um, sell-off on uh, Friday, but, uh, you know, that was kind of the, uh, here was the pre-Fed move, um, here was the post-Fed move, and then bouncing back again today. 
but you know these two kind of bizarre looking lines are again sort of um, indicating where we're kind of diverging here because we're putting a lower low but the last um, peak that we put in was a, um, a higher high so higher high followed by a lower low basically telling us it's not really a trend um, and so difficult to be directional and the the higher probability trades are just at either end uh, near the top, you know, near the tops for shorts, near the bottoms for buys, uh, as in basically a range-bound environment. Now that could all change, a um, bit like the, the FTSE, where we're basically looking for areas that the downtrend could resume. Start with the, hold on, let me start with the daily. So here we broke down. So, you know, we were making decent higher highs, higher lows. Broke down through this low. Um, basically came up, retested, pushed a little bit through it, dropped down again, down to this peak here. Recovered. Are we going to be able to sell off again and make a new low, um, or you know, is, or are we just pushing back, and again just range-bound choppiness? <laughs> so to me, uh, this broken level, followed by the followed by the peak on December 7th, are probably the two areas the market would look to sell off again. Were it going to in a more sort of aggressive downtrend type environment above there, um, you know, I would suspect that we're just heading somewhere back towards the top of the range. Um, you know, anywhere leading into the top of the range and a little bit above it um, has some scope for for the um, for the market to sell off. Um, hold on, yeah, saw a chat message coming through there. Yeah, uh, cheers for that, Riff. Um, yes, currency market analysis on its way. Basically, the idea is, uh, you know, sorry, I normally mention it at the start, is that um, we just cover the most popular market um, indices, commodities, and FX. So they're all they're all coming up. Any particular pair that you wanted to look at, definitely let me know. So we're pretty much done with the indices there. Um, if we are, yeah, we may as well jump straight to um, to FX, even though there is a notable downdraft in, in oil prices today with Brent in its lowest since 2004. So we're talking about 11-year lows for the world benchmark oil price here. Major bear market in place, but we will jump to that in a second after looking at um, looking at FX. There's a few economic releases of note this week, but um, you know, which, which actually, you know, if you are trading the news result or in and around it at least, um, can provide some opportunity around the Christmas trading, in my opinion, because yeah, the moves don't follow through, but you do get some moves because of the thinner liquidity, and so we do have the final GDP for the U.S. tomorrow and the U.K. Um, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, the UK one's later in the week, but the final for US uh, tomorrow. We've got uh, durable goods, housing data. Um, the final U uh, UK GDP result is on Wednesday, and on, um, you know, obviously it's all pretty much clustered into, um, you know, into sort of up to Wednesday with, uh, we've got a half day for, for the UK stock market on the, on Christmas Eve. And so, yeah, it's pretty much, at the, you know, we're pretty much looking up to Wednesday here. And a few notable results uh, on Wednesday, consumer sentiment as well on, uh, on Wednesday. So that's um, durable goods probably being the big one. And, um, uh, and then also GDP tomorrow. It's the final one, so it's the least important. We're actually expecting a little bit of a slowdown, um, nothing too much to write home about, but still will raise slight issues about um, whether the Fed did the right thing by raising rates. And, um, you know, we could see the dollar quite sensitive to that. We're, we're still at that tipping point in the dollar index, pushing towards where, you know, we've got into around 99, just underneath that 100 level that's been a barrier for so long. You know, once we get above that 100, that's that's really a game changer, I think. And we're, you know, that's probably um, going to coordinate with um, Euro USD heading down to parity. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but the, the confluence of those two events probably would happen together. Talking of the Euro, let's pull up that chart. Not much in the way of Eurozone data, to be quite honest. Um, we had the German PPI data today. Um, uh, you know, um, that came in in line with the expectations, not quite such a slowdown, so almost in a way supporting the idea of um, 
the ECB not doing as much at their last meeting. Um, so on that, uh, on that, kind of what we're dealing with at the moment is just the, the 108 handle in, in your area, Stella, where that's where we pull back to after the, you know, this was the ECB disappointment day, obviously the 300 plus pip rally, and we've pulled back since then. We haven't really managed to push much beyond uh, the 110 figure. And, uh, you know, that's basically causing us some, some trouble at the moment. We've pulled back to that same 108 handle. Below there, you know, we're probably going back down to the origins of the breakout. Um, down, you know, 106.40 type area would be the next logical support for, for me on that, um, along with some FIBO levels, but I'd still, I tend to use the Fibonacci's as confluence with other significant levels, and I, I tend to think that would probably be where we're heading, if not lower. Um, obviously, the sentiment on Euro has been bearish for so long, um, it's going to take more than just one move to get us up. Um, back in the, into the top of the range and looking for a breakout through that 117 that we reached back in um, back in August. Um, the ECB disappointed, but they did still add stimulus, so they're still um, you know still much more dovish than the US, which obviously have just raised rates, albeit with a sort of dovish tone that suggested there aren't going to be that many rate hikes to follow. Um, so. But, you know, kind of similar here, where we've made a higher high, but we've come back down to test the low, basically range band environment. And, uh, you know, I'm assuming a bounce back to, to towards the 110 handle. Um, I don't imagine there's going to be any real justification for a big breakdown, other than people really get behind the dollar bull trade um, after the third rate hike. Um, maybe maybe I'll skip straight to yen this time because obviously the big news at the end of um, last week was the the Bank of Japan surprising with additional stimulus, which uh, spurred a big drop in the yen, only for people to realise that actually um, the stimulus package was more of a sort of readjustment of the current package, just them announcing they're going to do buying buying some Japanese ETFs, which aren't you know, aren't really that popular compared to just the, the typical equities in Japan. Um, they're just sort of readjusting what they're buying um, according to the size of the market, I think. And so, um, you know, investors soon realized that and actually undid the gains of the day and then some for what turned out to be quite a large decline. But I think it's been a bit of a overreaction either way just because it was a surprise announcement. And um, I don't actually think this, this pattern maybe has as much meaning as it normally would. Um, you know, that opinion will be, uh, will be cancelled if we drop through this rising trend line, which follows closely by um, these October lows. Down through there, you know, obviously this, this has had some meaning. And we, and, you know, we dropped down first to, I think, 118.70, but then um, perhaps down to the 116 level again. At the moment, we're just in a choppy rising trend. Um, we've kind of been capped by this declining trend line. You know, if you pull out to the weekly chart, there's still a sort of general going assumption of um, more BOJ stimulus baked into this slash uh, the Fed's going to be height, um, tightening. Um, should the U.S. economy really slow down? then uh, maybe that's when we can see a break to the downside on this. But I, I think the default is that this is a triangle consolidation before a break higher. And just back over to Sterling. You know, um, can label this different things, declining wedge, uh, declining channel, but it's definitely one of the two. And, um, you know, quite clear-cut support where we are at the moment. If you connect these, uh, the July and the September lows, matches pretty well with this December bounce, and um, here we are again, pushing into the bottom of this trend line. It's got to, you know, it's got to either provide enough support to break out the top of the wedge, or it's got to give way at some point. It can't keep working, but for the moment, it seems to be um, at least causing some pause in the market. And um, I would say, given this, this bullish divergence in the RSI, um, 
probably um, you know higher possibilities within what is basically a general sort of range bound environment to the upside than there are to the downside after this quite steep sell off here. Obviously, the general backdrop to this is that um, many had hoped that the Bank of England would be quick to follow the Fed with a rate hike. I still think that might actually be the case, and I think language might shift quite dramatically next year from the Bank of England. But for the moment, um, that's pure speculation. And actually, what they've been saying is that just because the Fed raised rates doesn't mean we have to. Wage growth is, is, is higher, but it's, it's weak. And obviously, oil prices is just capping inflation in general. So there's no particular reason for the BOE at this point, um, according to them at least, to, to raise rates even by 25 basis points. Uh, so hence the weakness in the pound against the dollar. Um, different story against the euro, obviously, but even there we're seeing um, a slight narrowing of the difference between the monetary policy where the Bank of England being quite dovish, the ECB disappointed, so that, that differential between the ECB and the BOE, BOE coming in a bit and, and meaning that um, euro, uh, that euro pound sell-off is, is sort of stabilizing a bit. Now, um, jumping over back to uh, commodities here. Brent has been the, the headline grabber of today because here, you know, this is a short-term chart, uh, sharp sell-off, and you can see that every every bounce has really been sold into recently. Um, OPEC meeting was uh, here. You know, we were basically kind of range-bound before the meeting, and then boom, you know, a few days after the meeting, sell-off, and it's really been quite heavy decline since. Um, oh, sorry, what I meant to do were, no, what I meant to do is just show you that longer term picture of, you know, here we are, we're basically below these lows now in Brent. Keep in mind that this is obviously an adjusted futures price for the um, futures chart for the cash, um, but still that's what most people look at when, when looking back at historical charts for Brent, you know, so the exact low wasn't actually here. Um, but still, everyone will pretty much be looking at the same adjusted chart. So for, the, oh, for technical reasons, it kind of is the low, even though whatever that says, 3667 wasn't quite, if you catch my meaning. So significant, certainly. Um, but obviously, we've kind of been here before with this 2008 sell-off. So you know, have we just seen here the end here, and are we bouncing all the way back to 120? It's feasible. It doesn't seem likely at this point. Um, this was more sort of general scare in in a financial crash. Um, this has been uh, what I think is more of a sort of defined um, oversupply, in, specifically in the oil market. Um, you know, a lot of calls for 20. $20 per barrel, and you can see that is the support from um, back in 2001. So that's, um, that's feasible. You know, we could could definitely get there, but um, you know, rallies, uh, this drop off is um, getting pretty overdone. My suspicion is maybe it doesn't get much past 30, but um, pretty much like catching a falling knife at this point. Um, more just something to think about rather than to actually execute via your short-term trades. Been very choppy in gold. Um, you know, here just also indicating that general idea that we pushed out to a new higher high back in August, uh, but then we've since just dived leading into the Fed meeting. Um, and made a new low low, and now we've kind of stabilized into this new range, which gold will basically do. Uh, you know, look at look at this movement. Back between March and May, was it no, June even, we pretty much went in a kind of choppy sideways range sell off. Here, this was a bit of a more kind of rising range, but you can go back and f go back in gold and see that we get these sharp moves followed by choppy consolidations, and you know, obviously we're just in that consolidation phase at the moment. The best of this sell off has been had. And um, I suspect, you know, even if we do get a little push down to 1040, it's not going to be a major route, I suspect. Um, it's going to be more of a little, you know, lower low, fake out, push up, higher high, fake out, you know, before we actually determine whether we are going to push down to $1,000 per ounce in gold. Fundamentally, with the Fed raising rates, um, there's good reason to think that uh, gold has further downside to come. 
you know, obviously no one wants an asset uh, that doesn't yield anything when, when yields are rising. Similar theme with uh, with silver. Um, we're basically at the moment, I think, as I mentioned in the chart forum here, I think we're looking at a fake out through this declining trend line, um, and maybe a, maybe going to get pushed up to this uh, this fourteen sixty seven ish type level, um, sixty five, uh, and then above there into this declining trend line, which you can see better on the weekly chart, has held held pretty nicely. Um, this is a declining wedge pattern as it stands. Um, we get a push through there, then it's obviously not really anymore. Um, but this is actually a bullish pattern. And, and to some extent, we've been trying to push into severely new lows past 14, but it hasn't really worked um, ever since uh, last year. We haven't, you know, clearly the market is um, quite bearish on, on commodities, but silver hasn't really done more uh, than it did in 2014. It just the bounces have been shallower, which is a, certainly a negative. But actually, this technical pattern just shows some compression uh, and a possible push up here. And we could, you know, we could move back up to um, the 200-day moving average and back up to the sort of uh, 21, you know, 20, 21 level. Not there yet by any stretch. And we just had a bear, you know, bearish week a couple of weeks ago. Didn't get much of a follow through the following week. You know, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. Is that kind of um, basically fake out. We push lower, close the week above, and then you can see on the daily chart here, um, starting to show some signs of wanting to push higher. So up through this high, we should to me carry us to this high, and I think probably up to the, the, uh, the declining trend line before maybe 15 attracts a bit more of a sell-off again. So, yeah, in summary, a bit of a shortened week, really. Obviously, we've got Christmas, and no one wants to be trading on those days anyway. Uh, but for these three days, there's definitely a few things going on, um, all prices to bear in mind, obviously. Um, any extra news on this Spanish election? And just these, uh, these a couple of quite, ser quite serious economic results. The, the durable goods gives us a good picture on the, the U.S. consumer um, heading into the, uh, the big buying season of Christmas, and, um, and these GDP results, which, um, you know, gives us a better idea of what happened in the third quarter, gives us some basis for which to compare the, um, the fourth quarter performance when, that's, when those data are released in January. Okay, well, um, good luck for trading this week, and um, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh, talk to you again in January. Thanks very much. Jasper Lawler signing out.